welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what an honor and a privilege it is. Well, we would like to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And we pray that you're having a blessed Lent. Today is Friday. We know that it's a fast day in our church and also we abstinence want to day, abstinence yeah. day and we want to make sure that you also are able to participate in stations of the cross most parishes have it during fri um, friday during yeah. lent yeah. if you can't you can always go to ewtn.com forward slash lent you could do the stations at home yeah. um yeah. but make sure that there's some observance that you're doing ways that you're participating in your lenten journey to become more like Jesus. That's always the goal. <clears throat> more of him and less of us. Well, today we have Jim and Cheryl Manfredonia with us. They are co-founders of the Domestic Church Media. You could go to their website. It's domesticchurchmedia.org. And we're going to finish up our beautiful conversation yeah. with the both of them. I just, I'm enjoying the interview with them. I mean, they're doing great works. We're going to share more about I think they have four stations that reach out in New Jersey and in Pennsylvania and that apostolic mission of renewing the church and bringing awakening to New Jersey and mm -hmm. to Pennsylvania and, and to the world. Uh, but I just love the wisdom that they share, the years of marriage that they have, the, the dreams that had to kind of crumble a little bit so that they can get new dreams. And I think that's an important question to be asking of, of the Lord, especially during the season of Lent, you know, how is this possible? You know, Mary said at, at her conceiving, you know, with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. With God, everything is possible. And so long as, as a couple, your eyes are fixed on Jesus, you can be in unity about not knowing what the next step is, you know? As right. long as you're in unity, we've always found that in our lives, that that's tr true for this precious couple. Though we're united together, that we don't know the next step, but mm -hmm. we want to take the next step. Right. If you just show us or just... We always do the, you know, when you bowl and they put the little bumper pads when you were a kid. I still think we're like that. I said, mm -hmm. Lord, just put the bumper pads up because I don't know how to get this ball down the alley mm -hmm. here. Just bump us up. We want to go with you. We trust in you. Our eyes are fixed upon you. So important for couples. Well, I, I think by God's grace and mercy, we've been able to do that. We had great marriage counseling uh, yeah. to pray together every single day. And so we're married 42 years, going on 43. And um, Jim and Cheryl also, um, that the, the support, right, of uh, prayer and the, the power of prayer in our lives. And, and God just blesses that. So if you're married, if you're planning on getting married, um, make sure, maybe even during this Lent, you say, you know what, I've been married to you for 37 years and we haven't prayed. Let's start praying together this Amen. Lent. Let's Can make that happen. Be the greatest thing that you could do for the season of of Lent is to pray together and seek God's face. Domesticchurchmedia.org, go to that website for more about the Manfredonias. We'll be right back, there's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and we have a beautiful audience, yeah. and they are from Minnesota and Illinois, and we're so delighted that they've joined us today <laughs> and taken their pilgrimage down to EWTN, and they'll also be going to the shrine up in Hansville. They're and very up and happy. They are. They're very so happy. happy. And hopefully they will get to go downstairs where they can go to Mother Angelica's resting place. Mm -hmm. So we're thankful that they're here. If you're interested in doing a pilgrimage to EWTN, all you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department and they can make all of that happen for you. Well, today we have beautiful Jim and Cheryl Manfredonia with us again today. They're co-founders of Domestic Church Media. You can go to their website. It's domesticchurchmedia.org. 
Well, we had a wonderful conversation on Wednesday and loved having you. But now you have four stations yeah. and Fulton Sheen was very uh, instrumental in your radio stations. And so you named it WFJS, right? Yes. The first station. Yeah. The so, first, first two stations, actually. Two stations. Yeah. So we want you to mm -hmm. tell our family a little bit about that whole journey with him. It was Father Andrew Apostoli of Happy Memory. Yes. Remember Father Andrew, God bless him. Of course, another Jersey guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got to know him very well. Great and things come out of New Jersey. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but, and he, he was very, very uh, involved in, in helping us. And I would go to him often, and you know, we'd see him occasionally at conferences and things. But you know, he was the vice postulator for the cause of canonization oh, yes. for mm -hmm. uh, Fulton Sheen. Okay. And in 2002, he sent us a Christmas greeting, and in the Christmas greeting, he enclosed a prayer card to Fulton Sheen praying for his both, at that time, beatification and intercession. So I, I began to just in prayer, and I would go to adoration every day, and I'd pray, and I really felt led that we had to put our efforts to get a station in New Jersey under Fulton Sheen's patronage. and. Um, uh, one day, and I promised the Lord that when we, not if, but when we get our first station, I'll give it the call letters WFJS for Fulton J. Sheen. We then had the opportunity to take our children uh, to the crypt at St. Patrick's Cathedral, wow. mm -hmm. where at that time Fulton Sheen was interred. Of course, now he's been moved to Peoria, but he was there at the time. And we placed uh, some prayer cards on the tomb. I went home, and I, one day out of the blue, I was at home, and I, I looking for Catholic radio, where there's a station in, in the Trenton area, and I called the owners and I said, I'm, I'm looking to buy a, uh, a station is 1260 AM for sale. And the gentleman said, it's funny you should call me today because just yesterday we had a board meeting and decided to put it on the market. I said, great. I said, what are you asking for? And he said, four and a half million dollars. I said, wow. nope, let me go talk to my people. <laughs> and of course, my people were Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That was my team. The apostles. <laughs> so, so I went and I started to pray. And, and um, I went to the building and kind of circled it in prayer. I took this prayer card that I had touched to Sheen's tomb and placed it between the slats of the uh, vinyl siding on the building. <laughs> and I said, okay, Lord, I, have, I, don't, I don't have a nickel in my pocket, but if you can come up with the money. Anyway, one thing led to another. The, 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 when they decided to sell the station, uh, they had to get the, D, the uh, Department of, um, uh, of uh, Environmental Protection into to invest. It's 20 acres of property. Mm -hmm. And they found an environment conducive to the habitat of a wood turtle. So Only it, in New Jersey. All, right? It made it. <laughs> it devalued the property by about $2.5 million, which was great for us. Mm -hmm. They never found a wood turtle, but the environment was conducive to its habitat. So they had to protect the environment. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was wow. saying turtle soup, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but we never saw the turtle. Never saw the turtle. No. But anyway, so that lowered the price. God sent me people who could afford to fund it, and uh, we got our first station, and it is WFJS 1260 AM mm -hmm. in Trenton. And then we were then from there, about a year and a half later, got our second station. Um, an FM that we just applied for, applied for the license. It's a 15,000 watt station in, in uh, the, sh at the shore area. And, and it's not like we have a physical building there. You know, it's, it's just a tower. Mm -hmm. If you picture the sky with puzzle pieces, mm -hmm. so we're, we're on the air over here, and then for 89.3 FM, right, right. we're on the air over here, and it's just a matter of broadcasting. It's not getting another office and mm -hmm. another. Okay. We right. just, we are centrally located in the Trenton area. Mm -hmm. So that, we also get the call letters WFJS, because you'd have 1, a, 1 AM and 1 FM with the same call letters. Right. So. Which, Amazingly, the call they were available. They were available. <laughs> what they were, were the available. odds of yeah, that? That's, you yeah. know, right. again, the, these little tiny things that you just have to stop and say, "Wow, what a coincidence!" Oh no, 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 no. it's a signal, Grace. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more affirmation that this is what God wants you to be doing. Yeah. Tell us about the other two. And then after that, it was just one. You know, we, we we had again. I have a wonderful board of directors. As we you know, we we met them as business associates. They're now like family. These yes. wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. people who give up their time, talent, and treasure in so many ways. We were able then to purchase a third station uh, in Atlantic County, which is in South Jersey. And then about three years ago, a wonderful couple um, called me and said they had an FM station in the Cape May area, and they just couldn't operate it anymore, and they wanted to give it to us. <laughs> I'll take it, who no says problem. No. <laughs> give me, there was a beautiful yeah. FM that covers that part mm -hmm. of, of New Jersey, which is our fourth station. And, and as Cheryl said, it's all simulcast with all 
of most 80% EWTN, and then we do a lot of local as yeah. well. Because we could we have not support. done this if it weren't for EWTN. No. I mean, that's yeah. the roots mm -hmm. of the family tree. Mm -hmm. And now our listening family, truly a family because it's listener supported. Mm -hmm. right. And we do email back and forth and maybe meet somewhere. And Cheryl's the ambassador. Mm -hmm. I'm a little shy with people, <laughs> a little gruff sometimes. Cheryl, I send Cheryl out to meet the public for the, for the, good, <laughs> the good aura. But they are truly <laughs> amazing people to support the station and pray for us, you know, or from the widow's might to those who are blessed mm -hmm. and can give more. Yeah. Um, it, it's working in how many years now? And we, we receive wonderful, wonderful um, correspondence, letters, emails, yes. phone calls, mm -hmm. every day, really, of people who have said how much the station has changed their lives. And we always say, look, we're just the instruments. You know, no one compliments the artist's brush. It's the hand mm -hmm. holding that brush, it's God himself who works through our, our apostolate that touches these hearts and changes lives. I mean, changes lives. Yeah. And uh, we, that, all, that to me, that's, that's what it's all about. That's why we do it. Well, I can remember being in South Jersey. My mom was dying and we were on radio at that time at home with Jim and Joy doing our own radio show. Mm. But I was in need. Right. I needed comfort. I needed to be encouraged. I needed words of life and, and I'm in the car and going through a really difficult time and, and you're trying to find the Catholic radio and I was being ministered mm -hmm. to. And so, mm -hmm. you know, as you were a giver, also you're on the receiving on end side. and the power yeah. of Catholic radio, right. right? I mean, you can't, it's so beautiful because there are so many people who need to hear, right. who need to know that God is on their side and that God has a plan for their life and a purpose. Mm -hmm. And right. no matter how dark it is, there is gonna be light. And hope. And hope, mm -hmm. right? right? That's the what beauty we say, we it. never know we never know who we're reaching. We never know who's listening. You know, people will say, do you know how many listeners you have? And like, I said, that's God's job. I mm -hmm. told God I would do this. As far as where the signal goes and who he touches, that, that's his that's job. His Let him take care of that. <laughs> yeah. And he does. I mean, the, the beautiful, as I said, the beautiful stories that we hear and, and the friends that we meet, the family members who come forward that would become family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, we could never have imagined when we first met 36 years ago that we would be doing this with such such love and, mm -hmm. and such satisfaction mm -hmm. and desire. You know, I mean, I, 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 I turned 65 in December and I, I have no one, as long as the Lord keeps me here, as long as they mm -hmm. put me behind a microphone, I'm fine. Right. You know? <laughs> and I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. Mother was 75 mm -hmm. when she was doing her program, mm -hmm. you know, That's so yeah. uh, you, you know, there's work to be done and, and there's a lot of, a lot of souls out there that need to hear the word. And you have a show called Come To Me? I, I do a program every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at four o'clock Eastern time. Uh, for an hour called Come To Me that I've been doing. It was the first thing I ever did, and I've been doing it, this is my 25th year um, of doing it. And basically, it's, it's just sharing the faith. It's, it's just, a lot of it is, is sharing. Uh, I do a catechism study on Thursdays, and I'll go to scripture sometimes, or I'll share some of what our Holy Father has taught his general audiences, uh, you know, and of course, other uh, holy uh, men and women, and just kind of share and reflect on that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, and then Cheryl and I do a program on Fridays from four to six that we've been doing for a number of years called Friday Live, where it's a little a little lighter. It's, it's music and call in. We play a little game show, mm -hmm. name that mm -hmm. saint, and yeah. we invite name them. that Catholic tune. Name yeah. that Catholic tune. We've done that, um, <laughs> and uh, we have guests. You know, we'll have authors and others who join us interviews, by phone. Interviews, right. mm -hmm. music. Um, but you know, and I people always say how much they enjoy the joy mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. comes through, yeah. and that's so important as Catholics these days, especially our church you know, is, is under such attack in so many ways and has its troubles, but we need to be joyful in our mm -hmm. faith. We need to exude that joy. Look, I love being a Catholic mm -hmm. and nobody wants to join a miserable church. Right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you want to join a church where people are loving. Like the, and I always go back to the Acts of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. You know, you read the Acts of the Apostles, see how they loved each other. And you, look, you wonder how that church grew so fast in that mm -hmm. first century because of the great, well, the Holy Spirit, of course, but because of the great love that the people had and the zeal and the enthusiasm and the joy, yes. the fruit of the Spirit, to be able to take that faith out to so many people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we try to bring, when we do our program, and we have a good time, you know, we, 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 we enjoy each other's company, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still, after, after, after all these years. Um, On live TV, you definitely do. That's, right, that's <laughs> right, that's right, that's right. And th that program, uh, because it is live, we also broadcast, so you can watch it on yep. our YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, we saw four shows. Yeah. 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 Um, so we do video stream as well. So it is fun. We, we enjoy it. But again, I think that the important thing is to stress with people, listeners, viewers, is that, look, I love being a Catholic because of all the, uh, first of all, what we have. Mm -hmm. 
when we have the fullness of faith and the fullness of all truth, but also to be able to live that and share that with others and bring it to others and bring Christ to others, to encounter Jesus. Yeah, don't Jesus. keep it to yourself. Right. Right. Tell somebody, you know, yeah. spread the news. And that's what Catholic Radio has been doing for us for all these years. Perfect. It's, <clears throat> um, it's a lot of risk <laughs> in Catholic Radio from what I hear from all right. the people that have these stations and this and that. I'm still stuck on it was $4 million. <coughs> I went, went down to two and a half million. Like that was a good thing. I'm saying, where do you get two and a half million dollars? Right. right. So you really have to step out in faith. You know God's goodness and his providence. Did you have some tough times along the way just with your own? Yeah. You're not independently <coughs> wealthy? <coughs> no, <laughs> okay. no. No, in fact, at the time I began this, I didn't have a job. Cheryl was working basically three jobs. And when it first came time, when I first had the first opportunity to do this and leave my, my, my steady corporate job, I, I did, you know, I went to my spiritual director and he said, Jim, you've got to get out of the boat and mm -hmm. start walking. The Lord is calling you, get out of the boat and start walking. And I said, all right, Father, I'll do it. And then I was driving home and I said, but now I gotta tell Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> so he turned around and said, wait a minute. <laughs> no. and, but she received such an outpouring of grace when I said, because she's very, very uh, pragmatic and very frugal. And, Women like security. Right, okay, security. <laughs> we had three little you know, children. There's, yes. there's a safety net, there's a comfort zone, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to go beyond that. But I, I, I said yeah. it, you know, I think I, I'm being called to leave my job and to get into Catholic Radio. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she said, hey, I think you should do that. Wow. I think you should do that. I mean, uh, did you hear what I just said to you? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, you should do that. And, and that was a, that, and that is taking a risk because, you know, I had, a, I had a good job, five, a 401k and, mm -hmm. you know, all the vacation. Mm -hmm. All the security that goes with it. The security of a Fortune right. 500 into apostolate, which yeah. you don't know where it's going. You know, and scary land. It, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, again, the grace you receive from the Lord, He doesn't lead you into this direction without and to pull the rug out. Mm -hmm. He will take care of you as long as you believe in that faith. And Mother, uh, she was my inspiration. I would hear, I would watch. At that time, she was still doing her, her television program, and I would watch and listen to her, her faith and how she just believed and just, you know, well, just, mm -hmm. just do it. If the Lord's calling mm -hmm. you to, just do it. Right. If you've ever had a chance to read her book, I mean, it's such a story mm -hmm. of inspiration um, because every step of the way you know God wouldn't have taken me this far if he didn't and then it's another baby step and then another and you think well I wouldn't have gone this far if he was like you said if it, the bottom was going to fall out but there were times where the one time I was at the grocery you know with the three little ones mm -hmm. in tow mm -hmm. with a basket full of groceries and put the card in to pay for it and it, it was denied mm -hmm. and I called Jim I said well I don't what you know no money in the bank to pay for the groceries and we have to live on Cheez-Its and Clark bars but um God yeah. took care of it. But God yeah. provides. But the twelfth hour. That's right. right. That's and but then but then you have to learn to live up to the twelfth that's hour. Right. I mean, and that's the place that he takes you. It's like what? So true. This is amazing. Yeah. But it's that's how he gets us. We're gonna yes. take a break mm -hmm. at this point and share with you further at domesticchurchmedia.org. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we're visiting today with Jim and Cheryl Manfredonio. Before we wrap our discussion with them today, first we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy. As kind of a departure from my usual way of focusing on your guests and their stories, what I want to do today is kind of bring you up, up to snuff on exactly what the Vatican is doing and has been doing to fight the coronavirus scourge. Now, we've had lots of news in recent days and, and weeks, something coming out of the press office almost every day on this. And um, of course, this has hit many countries throughout the world. Italy's the worst hit uh, in Europe. However, still, the overwhelming number of cases in Italy are still in the northern regions of Venice, Milan, and other cities that you know of. 
Now, other focus here has also been on, on the Holy Father because he's been sidelined with a cold since February 27th and, and had not appeared in public at all until Sunday the 8th. Now, um, in recent days, we also learned that a person who had access to the Vatican's health center was found to have coronavirus, and the five people who came in touch with him have been uh, sidelined themselves, kind of quarantined. I, for example, as a Vatican um, retiree, if you will, I have access to those health services. Now, the offices were closed, and they were all um, sanitized. Now, um, Pope Francis, this is interesting, Pope Francis's 7 a.m. morning mass will take place as usual, however, without guests, and it will be transmitted live on all of the Vatican media. And the same thing will be true for the, the Sunday Angelus. This will be transmitted live, shown on the screens, um, as it was last Sunday on the 8th, shown on the big screens in the uh, St. Peter's Square. Interestingly enough, though, on Sunday the 8th, the Holy Father recited the Angelus prayer and remarks, reflections from the library in the Apostolic Palace, but he did make a surprise visit to the, to the window to greet the faithful. Now, we've also learned that in conformity with measures sent out by the Italian government, Vatican City State is doing many of the same things, such as restricting crowds. And actually, it was announced that masses from now on, churches can be open for prayer, but there will be no daily masses. I don't know if that's true in the small chapels or not in, um, in the Vatican, but um, there are measures that are, have gone out to all of the, the Vatican offices, anything li linked to Vatican offices, Vatican City State, and some of the precaution, Mary, precautionary measures include until April 3rd, 2020, the closure of the uh, precautionary closure of the Vatican Museums, the excavation office, you know that as the SCAVI, the museums of the Pontifical Villas, and the museums of the Papal Basilicas. So, and then several events scheduled for coming weeks in the Vatican um, have been moved to future dates, mainly because they foresaw bringing large numbers of peoples from around the world to the Vatican. So all we can do is um, pray and stay tuned. Thank you so much, Joan. Be assured that we are united together in prayer and in faith, and we do stay together. May God work all things together for good for those who love him and who are trying to fit into his plans. Just have a couple of minutes left, and I wanted you to share a little bit about, uh, is it the Bene Morente? Bene Morente. Bene Morente. Yes. Uh, honor that you all received, medal that you've all received, but what is that and what does it represent and what does it mean? It's the, it's the second highest honor, papal honor, that a, a lay person can receive. And uh, back in 2012, uh, the Bishop of Trenton, who's a wonderful bishop, B Bishop David M. O'Connell, who's a friend of ours and that does a program for us once a month, um, through Pope Benedict, awarded us the, uh, the medal for the work that we've been wow. doing these many years. And it is an honor. I mean, I, I, looked, I, I, had, I had never heard of it. And I was looking to see who else had won it. And there were some yeah. pre pretty prominent people like Maria von Trapp was mm -hmm. a recipient and others. And we were very honored and very surprised uh, yeah. to have been receiving that from Pope Benedict. But it means a lot. I, I, you know, you, you just, and you say, I, I don't want any awards for this. We yeah. just, you know, mm -hmm. we're just, I just hope I make it to heaven. That's, mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my bottom line. Well, that's it. You know, even you both know what you do, it's, for your love of God, for your love of our faith, that you want to share it with all the people. You're not doing it to win awards. You're not doing it for people to come up to you and say, thank you for what you do. You just do it because you feel like this is what needs to be done. Yeah. And when the bishop said, you know, we, we want to honor you with this, it's like, really? But you know, I know we don't have much time. The greatest honor we have received in all of this work was when Bishop O'Connell allowed us to have the Blessed Sacrament in our building. Mm -hmm. To have Jesus really, truly present in our little chapel, in the tabernacle, 24-7. I, I knew then, and it wasn't even, I didn't even ask him, Bishop O'Connell, uh, just I, I believe was a, a strong prompting of the Holy Spirit when I was showing him a space that we were, we were constructing to be a kind of a prayer room. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, Jim, don't even ask me. Yes, you can have the Blessed Sacrament here. Amen. And I just was blown away, and, mm -hmm. and you know, seven years back, seven years ago this month, that that, that happened, and, and we were just—I I yeah. still can't believe yes. it. Yeah. That, and that's the greatest honor that Jesus is there with us, no matter what I'm going through in the course of my day or our day or our You're work. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. I go in and just sit down. I have long talks with him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Cheryl, thank you so much for being with us, and I, I think. 
Pope Benedict was right in honoring you both and, and just taking the essence of your being in your hearts and kissing it on behalf of all of us and pinning that medal upon you both. Thank you for your service thank to you. the church and your love for Jesus Christ and spreading the word. Thank, thank you, you, and you so thank you for much. having us. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Come to me, all ye who travail and are heavy laden, and I'll refresh you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm gentle. I'm lowly of heart. You will find rest for your soul. Keep it on EWTN, and remember, you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.